Hi, this is part B. I'm sorry that my camera shut, automatic shut off turned off and uh, there's no indicator on the front of the camera that it turned off. So I wasn't aware that I the video had turned off. I hope I don't repeat myself, but I want to make sure I get all the information to you. Um, I was speaking about how... Um, now, just swallowing is really difficult. You can see I keep stopping. And now I was watching the other video that I did, and I keep taking... It's hard to swallow because my lymph is enlarged. So that is one of the symptoms. So I'm sorry about the hesitation and the large swallows there. But... Um, I was speaking um, when the video cut off about um, how I, when I haven't taken care of the parasite and kept up on things that will keep it down, um, like taking diatomaceous earth internally, you can take, um, I just take a spoonful three times a day and that will keep them out of the gut somewhat so it'll keep them down and soaking my hands in peroxide and my feet in peroxide will keep them down. So if I am busy and I don't keep up on those things, the parasites get worse and then my mind gets a little slower and I have more symptoms. And as I was saying in the other video when it would cut off, I don't know if I think about the water um, just subconsciously because I know that this parasite is a water parasite and it does c cause its um, people to have, uh, you know, insects that it hosts. Uh, the host to commit suicide, but I had a weird experience today. I ran into a woman I haven't seen for months. Her daughter was one of my daughter's good friends when they were growing up, and I spoke to her, and I was telling her about these symptoms, and she's got all the symptoms, and some of her children have some of the symptoms, and I said, well, it's really weird. I was explaining how this parasite is a water parasite, and it makes its host commit suicide, and I was telling her that I, I don't think I'm going to kill myself. It's not something that I, I ponder or think about, but that I have had these weird dreams where I'm drowning, and she just stopped me, and she said, my daughter, my friend, my daughter's friend, her daughter had a dream last night where she was drowning, and she said that her daughter has had a rash around her nose for years as well. Now, I don't know whether... I think she said her neighbor has a lot of cats, and she got it from the cats, um you know, in her yard. She says they're always in her yard. In fact, she's captured several of them in her garage and um, tries to take them to the pound or whatever um, because there's just such a wild cat population in uh, her area. And um, I have a lot of cats in my neighborhood, too, and they use my backyard and my garden as a litter box, and so I think that's where we got it from. And my daughter always goes back and jumps on the trampoline in the yard barefoot all the time as well, so I, I really think that's where we got it from. And the reason that I think it's from cats is, um, well, I'll go back to the, the drowning thing. Um, her daughter doesn't know she has these parasites, yet her daughter's having dreams of drowning, and I do think that these parasites, it has been proven that these parasites do cause some change, a chemical effect on their host so that the host does commit suicide. I, that's why earlier in the video that I did, I talk about how I think this is a mental health problem. Um, I do think it is a serious problem. I've had people contact me throughout the U.S. on my blog since I've been posting about this thing that they think they have the same thing because they've tried medications and it has not worked and they have all the same symptoms. And um, every day I run into several people and it's just weird how uh, they hear about it and, and or I just run into these people and I do think that God has a hand in this trying to get the word out as quickly as possible and get enough testing that they might actually do a, um, a blood test. They have a blood test for the other types of hookworm, threadworm type things, uh, specific threadworms anyway, strongloides type. Um, so if enough people get diagnosed with this, I'm sure there will be research and they will make a blood test and that would be a lot easier for people to get diagnosed. Um, now I'm trying to see, this is the brain thing. I'm trying to remember what I didn't go back to. Oh, the cats. Why I think it's cats. First dream I had about anything about parasites, before I knew I had parasites or anything, I had a dream that I had a cat parasite and it was in my head. Now, some people think that's crazy. I have had many dreams that have come true in my life. Not most of my dreams don't come true. But um, it seems to be a different kind of a dream. I can dream in color and it's very specific. And I, I had a dream that I had three parasites and one was specifically a cat parasite and it was affecting my head. And so that was part of the reason I went to the doctor the first time telling them I thought I had a parasite. 
Um, so after that, I had another dream where um, it was found that that it was a cat parasite, but it was a huge problem. Like it was a big cat problem, and it really scared me in the dream because it was like a tiger kind of a cat, and it was like this big deal. And so um, I I know that you know people might think that's crazy, but if I hadn't followed those dreams or promptings, as I call them, I wouldn't have figured out the hydrogen peroxide soak on the hands. I wouldn't have figured out the huffing hydrogen peroxide would help. I, I wouldn't have figured out maybe even had a diagnosis because of the um, specific way that I sent it up in saline. And, the, and overall, I could have treated myself and not let anybody know. And that would have been very easy for me to do with my family. I could have bought a bottle of Vermox online for, you know, less than $100. You can get a thousand tablets. It's very cheap. And I could have treated my family and not said anything to anybody. But who helps those babies? Who helps the kids? Who helps the pregnant women? Who helps, you know, anybody? The other weird thing I've had is I had a dream that um, it was in the food. And I was eating a salad in the dream and, and then there's this worm on my plate and then scientists came and were looking at this, my plate. And then in the dream, the scientists broke off. One of them was looking at, you know, it in the ground and one of them was looking at in the air and like one of them was flying and the scientist is following this path and another one's following this path. And so it, it became this big study where people were looking at it in all of the different areas but it was actually in my food in this dream. And the other part of that dream, which I found really interesting, um, was that there was an autistic boy trying to get to my water and my food. And I kept saying, not now, you know, I'm not done, stop. <laughs> no, don't get, I'm not, it, it's not time yet, it's not time yet. And, um, and I couldn't really understand that. He, he finally grabbed my water and was drinking out of my water in the dream and I was really upset because I didn't want him to get the parasite. But um, after I woke up, I kind of started pondering on that. Now, there is a huge autism problem um, that grows out all the time. And I thought, if this is a water parasite and somebody has it for years and they don't know they have it, the uterus is full of water. And if that parasite is floating in that water while the baby's being developing, Who's to say that the parasite isn't in the brain and causing the autism problems? And just depending upon how heavy the load of parasite is, it could be a problem. Now, I'm not saying it is. This is purely speculation. I just, it, it just came to me after the dream. I couldn't understand why there was an autistic boy in this dream because it was a very vivid dream in color and I was trying to understand it. So, um, but that would make sense that perhaps there is a link to autism with this parasite because it is a water parasite and babies are developing in water. So um, anyway, that was just an aside. That's just something that I'm throwing out there for somebody at some point to look at if, if we can get this looked at. But um, And I wanted to go back to the cat thing, why I think it's cats. Um, I When I was having my m mind symptoms, I might have put this on the last video, I don't remember, but um, I was talking to someone and they said, well, will you do this? And I said, I can't remember that. You're just going to have to text me or something, email me. And my brother, I have a brother that has always kind of had that brain fog and he says things like that all the time. And I've, I've got two degrees. I've never said that before. I'm very precise and say what I mean and I can remember things very clearly. And so for me, it was during that time where they were really bad in my brain. And it made me think that perhaps my brother has had these for a long time as well. And so I called him and I was asking about his health and if he'd had any of these symptoms. And now I did see the black worms under the skin, uh, under the fingernail of his daughter. And his daughter's got ADD, ADHD, and, and has had problems that way. And um, the only people that I've seen the worms under their nails, it's after they've had a, the infection for a long time. Now for her to have those in under her nails, she's had to have this infection for a long time. So um, I asked about some of the symptoms and I said, does anybody in your family have a rash? And his, he said that his wife had gotten scratched from one of their cats and I didn't even know they had cats. I knew they had a dog. but. Um, a year ago and has never been able to clear it up. Now she soaked her hand of peroxide and up come those little white parasites. 
So that was one link to them. And then I had another girl show up yesterday. I don't know her. She's from another city hours and hours away. It was a weird fluke how I called my friend and she asked me to go pick up this girl and spend some time with her. So no contact ever. She was a missionary and was sent home sick with chest pain. And when I spoke to the girl, um, she has the symptoms. She had the black lines under her nails. She had chest pain, which I have, um, heart pain, and uh, running out of air, and um, she had the rashes. And so we soaked her hands, and up came the parasites. And I, I asked her if she, about cats, and she said she had been kit bitten by a cat, a neighbor's cat, when she was 10. Now, I don't know whether she got it because she likes to go barefoot. Most people that I speak with about this that have symptoms do like to go barefoot. So it could just be from the soil. It could be from the food. But there is a cat leak. And I really, because of that dream that I had at the very beginning that I had a cat parasite. Now, I will tell you that we did test for toxoplasmosis. So it's not... Um, that cat parasite affecting my brain. That was one of the first things we did. And we also tested for strongyloides. That was negative. We did the stool cultures times three. This, all of these are on my blog. You can see the results. And um, and we've tried all the parasite medication that's available. And none of them have worked. Um, the only one that did work is Vermox. And I can't get that legally in the U.S. So every time I've about ordered it, I feel really strongly that I need to figure out a way that's a legal drug or legal some way to treat it. So um, I feel like the more attention we can draw to this by getting more people diagnosed, the more chances we have of getting it looked at quickly. So if you have symptoms that you think are this parasite, um, one I would say soak your hands and or, or it doesn't not everybody has it on their hands my daughter has it on her face and so where if you have a rash or an irritation it just might be looking like dry skin on your elbows or something um, try the peroxide you need to soak it for a, a, a amount of time and then dip it and let it air dry dip it and let it air dry dip it and let it air dry I've tried several different methods and that seems to be the best one the first time I did that I sprayed it for hours and then let it overnight put some diatomaceous earth on it and then the next day I sprayed it again and up came all these little wormy things. So, you know, check out my YouTube channel, The Secret is Gratitude. Watch the videos where I show the how to soak the peroxide and talk about the how to get the worms out of your stool. Dig them out, take them and get them sent to a lab. Um, the lab they sent mine to was ARUP. Um, I don't know if they kept the specimen or not. I'm sure it was one of their, you know, sometimes labs have will stick it on a shelf if it's a weird thing. But um, I just feel like this is kind of my mission to help people figure this out um, and to be better. I would like to take something and feel better um, because I'm extremely tired and I have chest pain all the time and other health problems because of it. Obviously, I have a hard time swallowing. I choke on food. I have gained 100 pounds and that's not who I am. I'm usually peppy and have a lot of energy. So um, I would like to feel better, but on the other side, I really want to help my family and my friends and my neighbors and everyone else figure this out so that we can all feel better. So please, if you have symptoms, rather than just trying to treat yourself, and I have to caution you, if you decide to try taking Vermox and ordering it, which I highly recommend you don't do until we figure out some better thing, you could cause more damage. If you kill it off and the eggs hatch inside of you, you can cause a massive infection, which is causing major more damage than what the symptoms you're having are right now. I pray that I can find a better way of getting rid of it, and maybe Vermox will be the answer in the end. But if you tried it and you caused harm, or you gave it to your family members and caused harm, I think you would feel extremely, you know, sad about that. Um, and I would hate to have somebody try it and cause more damage and have the pain that I had maybe with the Pinex or the Pyrantal. So until this can be looked at more intensely, I I would suggest, you know, you, you just do things that will keep it down. Take diatomaceous earth. You can buy that online or at a, a farmer supply. It's a just ground up seashells and they use it on trees to keep the, you know, parasites down on the fruit. Um, 
and it's not harmful. It's a calcium source, and so I just take three spoons of that a day um, in water, and um, that's one way to keep them down. Black walnut is a antiparasitic, so you can eat walnuts and keep it down uh, until there is a cure for this, and hopefully we can find find out quickly. But the reason I did this video is because if people from all over the U.S get diagnosed with this, they're go the CDC is going to have to look at it. You know, I sent emails to um, Dr. Oz, I sent emails to The Parasite Within, I think that's the name of this show, um, Ellen DeGeneres. I truly want to get the word spread so that more people will get diagnosed so that the CDC will have to then investigate and figure it out because I think this is an epidemic in our nation and hopefully together we can figure it out.